I've been using the A7C for over six months now. I've learned what works and what doesn't. So I thought I'd make a video about it because I think it's quite interesting, especially if you're thinking of upgrading or switching across from the A7 III. Now I've owned the A7 III since it first came out early in 2018, and I'm actually filming on it now. And when the A7C came out last year in 2020, I was wondering what it would be like compared to the A7 III. Now, if you're a video shooter, there is a massive advantage with it over the A7 III, and I'll talk about that a bit later in the video. There's no denying that the A7C is a great little camera, and if you're used to using the A7 III, it feels quite similar. Not so much in the size of it, but how it shoots and how it feels. I do have a few annoyances with it, as well as a few pleasant surprises. Now, a lot of people were saying that this has been designed for videography only, but it is a great stills camera as well. It takes 24 megapixel images. This gives them a resolution of 6,000 by 4,000. And I've been comfortable in taking it out and leaving the a7 III at home. The main upgrade compared with the a7 III is the focusing system. It follows the basic principles of the a7 III, but then the live focus tracking is so sticky that it just doesn't want to come unstuck from the thing that you selected. And the focusing is surprisingly good when you do this. So you touch something on the screen on the back and it'll pretty much track it wherever it goes, as long as it stays in your frame. And sometimes I've had a few things that have come out of the frame and then they come back in the frame, that focusing system just locks back on it exactly where I touched it. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens every now and then. And I absolutely love this focusing system. It works both in photography and videography. And this really is a game changer. I can't wait for the a7 IV to come out as I'm pretty sure it will have that on it as well. And with any luck, it will be an even better version in that newer camera. Now, I was surprised that they missed that third dial just below the shutter button here, but I haven't actually missed it as much as I thought I would. I shoot in aperture priority or shutter priority a lot of the time, and so I only really change the aperture or shutter speed depending on which I'm prioritizing, and then I change ISO. So this wasn't too much of a problem. The only time it was annoying was when shooting in manual mode, but I did get used to this after a while. Now the flip out screen has its pros and cons, and there's a lot of you that love it, but there's also a lot of you that hate it. But it's amazing how nice that old tilt screen actually is. Now I actually like both systems. I like the flip out screen, for shooting in that low position or the high up position. But I also like the old screen that just tilts out because of the compactness of that screen. Now, as for that one card slot, this doesn't bother me too much either. I've never had a card fail on me in camera. Kind of touch wood. I actually did a poll on this a while back and out of almost 900 of you, 81% have never had a card fail at all. And I know a lot of you have been shooting for quite a while. And I do have a confession to make. I only ever use one of the two card slots in the A7 III, 99% of the time I shoot on so many shoots as well. I've not had one card fail either. Now, I'm sure there are those of you that have had a card fail and that would absolutely suck. And if this had have happened to me, I probably would think differently about this camera. Now for the things that annoy me a little bit more. Some of these seem to have been made to make it a more budget-friendly option compared to the a7 III, but some seem like an intentional crippling of the camera to make it a little bit more different to the a7 III than it really has to be. Now, the first one is a little bit unavoidable, but you can't really use an L bracket with this if you are using it for photography because the L bracket would go along the bottom and up the side, and that would get in the way of this flippy screen. I've done a video on this in the past, and there is a way of pulling it out or sliding it forward slightly, but the small rig one that I had really got in the way and it was a compromise with either not being able to use the flippy screen or not being able to get at your SD cards or the other ports. So it was pretty useless and I actually threw it away. Now onto that EVF. This is absolutely rubbish. As soon as you're out and about and trying to use it in a real world environment, it absolutely sucks and I don't actually use it when I'm shooting with the a7C anymore. I just use the monitor on the back and I crank it up to its brightest level if the sun's out, but the EVF might as well be removed as it's just taking up space. Now with the shutter, it is a different mechanism than the a7 III and it only goes up to a maximum speed of one four thousandth of a second instead of one eight thousandth of a second in the a7 III. It doesn't sound much, but it's a stop of light. And when you're shooting in the midday sun or it's really bright and you want the shallow depth of field look, it feels limiting. 
A couple of times out on the streets, I've had the aperture at f1.8, the ISO at 100, and the shutter speed at 1 4,000th of a second, and it's been a little bit overexposed. So more speed would have helped. But thinking about it, if you have picture profiles turned off, you can drop the ISO to 50, which gives you back that stop of light. Now, if you use a flash with this camera, the sync speed is a lot lower than the a7 III. In the a7 III, it's 1 250th of a second, whereas in the a7C, it's at 1 1 60th of a second. Now, this isn't too much of a problem if you have a flash with high speed sync, but if you're trying to control the ambient light and the flashlight, this could cause a problem and you could get that ambient light creeping into your shot. Now, with a lack of those customizable buttons, this was quite annoying and could have been avoided, especially when you see how many are on the A6600. Just a few more on this camera would have come in really handy. Another big annoyance for me was the lack of a multi-port. In this little flap down here, we've got a USB-C, the HDMI and a headphone port but no multi-port. So this means I can no longer use any of my remote or wired triggers with it. I ended up getting this Bluetooth trigger, which is also a tripod. I did actually want just the remote, but every single shop that I went to seemed to be sold out of it. But it was another thing I had to buy even though I've already got remotes for it. Now, for those of you that shoot a lot of video, the one thing I have found to be a huge advantage, and one reason why I would get this over the a7 III, is that stabilization data that can be used in Catalyst Browse to get gimbal-like shots without a gimbal. I've been using this a lot, and all of the B-roll shots in my first street photography video were stabilized with this, even though my wife was just using the camera with the Bluetooth handle that I've just shown you, and not worrying too much about keeping the camera stable, I just stabilized it with that gyro data that saved in those files, and it did a surprisingly good job. Now, I just wish the guys over at Adobe would start to incorporate this into Premiere Pro, as an option instead of warp stabilizer. This would really make it a game changer instead of having to round trip to Catalyst Browse and back. Now, apart from these few issues, I really like the camera. It is a bit smaller and I keep it in this handy cage, which kind of protects it. I haven't dropped it yet, but if I was to drop it, this would protect those corners. It kind of beefs it up as well. I've got quite big hands and on this bottom bit, I can kind of catch my little finger there. It does make it feel like a nicer, a better sized camera for my hands. As for changing it, if you have the A7 II or the original A7, it would definitely be worth an upgrade to this camera. If you're a photographer and already have the A7 III, stick with the A7 III. But if you're a videographer, I'd say it's a really good option to give you a better focusing system, that flippy screen and that stabilization.